How's everybody feeling? Good. Awesome. Y'all look good. Okay, so the brother's gonna bring me a chair and we will get into the presentation here. Um, and I'd like to kind of just do a quick assessment of who I'm talking to in this room today. So by showing of hands, how many pescatarians do we have in the room? Okay, represent. And how many vegetarians do we have in the room today? Okay, cool, and how many vegans? Word, okay, great. Okay, so uh, how many of you are eating a diet that you know you damn well you shouldn't be eating and you're ready to transition into a healthier way of life? All right, so then we're all here together to grow and to learn. Good. Okay, I'm gonna get a little closer. All right, so for those of you who don't know who I am, um, and you're thinking, who is this lady up here? Um, my name is Chef Aki, or I'm known as Chef Aki, and um, I am obviously in the culinary arts, but my passion is wellness and holistic health in general. Um, and that journey has started from a bit of a different place than the typical uh, culinary chef. Whereas I wanted to get into the field because I wanted to help to prevent disease and cure disease with food. Okay. Um, I'm 35 today, going on 36, and I'm grateful to have never, ever, ever had to have been medicated or hospitalized for any reason at all. And I am trying to hold it down and keep it going. And I, you know, I think I'll, I'll be able to do it, but I think I've been able to do that because I started very, very early in this journey. So everything that I've picked up over the last 17 years, I'm really on a mission to share with you. And we're all here to learn together. I'm no different than you other than I've been on this journey for a long time and, and I'm, I'm anxious to share any, uh, any information that I have on how you can become well if you're struggling with uh, any particular disease, if you're struggling with um, you know, weight loss, if you're struggling with, um, right now, fibroids and reproductive disorders is, is, is the uh, topic of the day because this is getting out of hand. So there's a, a war on the womb, especially the womb of a black woman. So that's something that we absolutely have to address and, and get serious about the situation because we're spending billions of dollars every year. Uh, black women are 78% of all hysterectomies right now are performed on black women, okay? And we're talking about billions of dollars pre-care, post-care. I mean, it's, it's crazy. All right, and that doesn't include all the medication. All right, so with all that being said, uh, again, for those of you coming in now, hey, um, I'm Chef Aki. You can find me online all day, every day, uh, teaching and trying my best to inspire via the food arts and lots of great information on how to get well. Now. Uh, as you can see here, we're going to talk about ancient foods for the modern man. And I want to be clear that when I'm saying ancient foods, we're talking about indigenous foods. Uh, as you can see here by the title of my book, Electric Foods, Indigenous Foods. I use all of these terms interchangeably because it really is the same thing. Natural foods are indigenous foods, are non-hybrid foods organic, uh, ancient foods, all right? Um, so we'll go uh, into some details and we'll do a slide presentation today to, to get into that. So um, as the book here is Electric, A Modern Guide to Non-Hybrid and Wild Foods, all right, we're gonna kind of get into the differentiation between uh, a typical vegetarian or vegan diet and what it means to 
understand non-hybrid and wild foods and electric foods and why this is important. All right. Um, and then we'll do a little Q&A after. So, um, all right. So we're going to try to get through this slide and I'm going to hop all over the place a little bit. Uh, if you could go forward a little bit. Thank you. Forward on the slide. Next slide. Next slide. A little wopsided, isn't it? <laughs> if we could straighten up the slide, brothers, Duran. Uh, I don't know who's controlling that. Next slide. Next slide. Next slide. We're going to go all the way down. Next slide. Next slide. We're going to go a little further. Okay. Further, further, further. A little further. Further, further, further. All right. Hold on. <laughs> go back. All right. Here we go. We're going to start with what the hell do I eat? Because I know that's what's going through your mind every day when you're, you're thinking, I got my husband, I got my kids, I grew up on soul food, barbecue is good, and I want to eat the pancakes and the pizzas and the frozen things and convenient foods, okay? So I know this is difficult. Um, I know we all want to be better. Everybody wants to have the perfect tiny waist and everybody wants to be strong and fit. The brothers want to maintain protein and they want to keep muscles and mass and all of that, all right? So I know that it's a struggle. Um, so we want to talk about what you can do today as opposed to a whole lot of rhetoric about what you should eat. I know that you know what you shouldn't be eating. I think, I, I hope you know. Uh, but most of you know what you should not be eating. Okay, if it, like the brother just said, uh, who was here earlier, if it did not come fresh out of the ground or from a tree and it doesn't have any life force from the sun that it absorbs from the sun, the same way the plants have the photosynthesis process, uh, African people or African ancestry, indigenous people of the planet are considered phototrophic. Like plants have photosynthesis, we're experiencing uh, uh, being phototrophic means that you're absorbing sunlight and you're turning that into nutrition into, in your body. Okay? So that's very, very important. So if it ain't that, then it's not it. All right? And it's very simple. Um, we get real uh, technical when it comes to this food thing about what you should and should not eat. And I'm here to tell you that it's not technical and it's not difficult. And it's actually a shame that we've gotten this far away from what we just should simply eat to sustain ourselves. Can you imagine uh, the gorillas and the apes and the animals and birds sitting around saying, wow, man, did you get enough protein today? You know? Like, did you get enough amino acids? Or I don't think I'm getting enough enzymes. And, you know, they, they don't have that conversation. They just know. They're in tune. They know what to eat. You know, they don't have to read a book to figure it out eat right for the blood type and macrobiotic this and that why is that okay why, why don't why don't they have to speculate and why do we speculate about what to eat why don't we just know okay so the the thing is we do know but we've gone so far away from that that we become addicted and that's what's really happening is that we're not eating food really we're we're eating drugs we're eating poisons and we're addicted. We're just like a bunch of crackheads. And it's true. Watch your children. Watch your children when you take away all the carbs and the sweets out the house for a week. Take the potato chips and the noodles and the cookies out of the house for a week. And watch what happens. The kids going to climb the walls because they're going to say, oh, it ain't nothing to eat in here. And they look in the fridge and it looks like a rainforest. And they're thinking... There's nothing to eat, and that's unfortunate, you know. So we have to change the entire lexicon here of, of how we're dealing with food and understanding food. All right, so what I call the Class C diet, Aboriginal vegan vegetarian diet, the first stage of actual healthy eating. This is the practice of eating organic, wild organic and wild vegetables and wild grains, all right? And that means none of the food is grown conventionally sprayed with pesticides. And it tells you why. Pesticides destroy the glandular 
and the endocrine system of the body. It escalates cancerous estrogens and it alters nerve signaling via their dense ammonia compounds. So in short, cancer, okay? Uh, this is also talking about estrogen, which is a major issue with reproductive disorder with women. Uh, way too much estrogen going on, estrogen dominance is the basis of all reproductive disorder. And that's coming from not only what you eat, but it's coming from, of course, um, birth control pills, you know. Uh, the doctor tell you to go balance your hormones, and here's a pill. Well, it's, a, it's an estrogen pill, okay? So we wanna be very careful about estrogen pills because it feeds fibroids. Estrogen actually uh, lives off of, uh, feeds uh, what we call white adipose tissue and uh, that's what's gonna cause tissue growth, it's gonna cause reproductive growth and things like that. Okay, next slide. Next slide, next slide. Wanna go to substitutions. Next slide. Okay, this is really long. All right, substitutions. So we wanna talk a little bit about um, how to substitute some of the foods that you love and um, replace them with some electric foods, some ancient foods, some non-hybrid foods. Now, let me be clear, uh, non-hybrid, I know there's a lot of speculation about what a hybrid is and what it isn't and why it's necessary, and I wanna clear that up, okay? Uh, here we go. So, hybrid foods are foods that are altered not only through being sprayed by pesticides like in non-organic item, okay? Because you can have an organic hybrid food, okay? So be mindful of that. You can go to Whole Foods today and find an organic grape or watermelon, but it's still hybrid because it doesn't even have a seed in it. So when does the creator do that, all right? So that's, something's going on. And what's going on is called manganese inhibitors being added to that fruit or plant. And it is causing sterility. So now that food has become seedless so that you don't have to worry about seeds getting in the way. But then, you know, then we have problems with our reproductive system because the plant has no reproductive system, okay? So it doesn't matter if it says organic, if it still is seedless, all right? So I wanna be clear about that. Also, when we're looking at these uh, Cavender bananas, you can Google all over and see about Cavender bananas uh, being a major, major hybrid, one of America's largest hybrids. You go all over to other parts of uh, the world and you see Dole Company all right, making billions of dollars off of those big old seedless cavender bananas, a real banana or an indigenous banana in its normal, healthy, natural state with its genetic integrity intact, the way God made it thousands of years ago is a very small banana. And I'm sure you've seen them, they're called burro bananas. All right, and they have little black seeds in them. Have y'all seen those? Okay, that's a banana. Very sweet, delicious, let it ripen. The same way you do with your, banana, your regular banana. And then you can freeze those and make your smoothies with those and so forth. And make your banana pudding, whatever you're gonna do with it. All right. So um, again, another hybrid, super sugary, pumped up hybrid. Could be organic banana, yet still hybrid. All right, so this is the detail we're getting into here. All right. So wheat is the first thing on the list because wheat is one of the number one uh, killers, attacks the immune system. Uh, wheat is awful, you know. What they did with wheat back in the uh, late 70s and 80s, making us think that this stuff was healthy, is just ridiculous. Uh, majorly monocropped, uh, hybridized, gluten-filled, nutritionalist item, okay? Food-like stuff, but not really made for consumption. There's a great book out called Wheat Belly. 
We Belly, incredible book that breaks down all of the things that you can suffer from due to eating too much wheat, and they put it in everything. So you want to be very careful about wheat bread and wheat this and wheat that. It's not good for you. We're talking about asthma. Your children are suffering with asthma, suffering with eczema. If you're suffering with inflammation, diabetes, you want to get off that wheat. So you can replace it with things like your quinoa flour, your millet flour, your teff, your amaranth, your spelt. These are some of the ancient grains uh, that have their full genetic integrity intact that you can start implementing in your diet to replace wheat. If you like to bake and things like that, you can do your, um, your millet and teff and quinoa and things like that, all right? So you can find all of these uh, in their whole form or broken down into their, um, milled into the, a flour form as well, all right? Um, so all that goes is couscous, rice, grits, oatmeal, and I'm, brown rice too. Um, the ideal rice to eat is gonna be wild rice, okay? And I heard somebody say black rice, forbidden rice. Um, but ideally, your wild rice, you want to look for your wild or black rice. Um, if you're going to do um, couscous, I don't suggest it. I suggest you do the quinoa instead, amaranth instead. Uh, if you want a, br a good breakfast cereal, get away from the grits and the oatmeal. Try your quinoa flakes. Try your, uh, your chia seed, uh, your amaranth mixed with your millet, mixed with your quinoa flakes. Millet makes a great breakfast, okay? So these are some of the things that you can make it like oatmeal, okay? But it's not gonna be this mucus forming, glutinous, uh, almost uh, nutritionalist item, all right? And I know some of this sounds crazy to some of y'all. It's like, this is, that is my favorite thing, you know? Um, <laughs> I get it, it's, you know, it's cheap, that's why it's cheap. It's, it's not a health food, okay? So they want you to, uh, to, to purchase the cheap, nutritionless foods to fill you up, to fill you up, so you're out the door, you know, so that, that's what that's about. All right, but it's not good for you. Um, potatoes, uh, turnips, rutabagas. So you're gonna wanna replace your potato uh, and your carbs in general with things like your butternut squash. If you don't feel like chopping that bad boy up, because I know it can be a pain, especially if you got a big family, everyone loves butternut squash. You can make them like candy yams if you want to, minus the white sugar and the butter. You can use your coconut butter and you can bake it and it's wonderful. Bake it whole, you don't even have to skin it. You can just chop it down the middle and bake it. It's wonderful. But you're gonna wanna also do, um, like your wild winter squashes are wonderful. All those weird looking squashes that you look at and you're thinking, what the hell is that? And you know, how do I incorporate that? Don't be afraid of it. Put some heat on it and it's wonderful. You know, don't run from the squashes. These wild squashes are great. Um, you can find butternut squash chopped and frozen, organic. All right, so look for that in the frozen section and dump that in your stew. You know, dump that in your casserole. You know, uh, toss that up, sweeten it up, and make it, you know, get some maple syrup and some cinnamon and some vanilla and some sea salt. Just jump on in there. All right. Um, white onions. We want to get away from the white onion. It is, again, a hybrid in its full genetic integrity. A white onion uh, is a red onion. All right. Uh, red onion is wonderful for a neurological uh, system. It's wonderful for um, your blood, great for your liver. Um, red onion is gonna be the number one spice of choice in vegetarian cooked food. Um, you're gonna wanna do red onion. Get away from garlic. And I know that this is a major, major argument and topic among many, many people. If you guys are familiar with Dr. Sebi, you know that he is anti-garlic. And I'm gonna tell you why, all right? So garlic, um, as well as a hybrid, it's highly acidic, all right? So we're talking about the alkaline and the acidic balance of food. 
all right, and what we put into our bodies, that we want to balance that acid alkaline. And some people will say, you want to be completely alkaline. And I know that you know there's a lot of this alkaline water fad, and people are buying $10,000 alkaline machines and spending all this money on alkaline water. Um, you do want to try to get your body as alkaline as possible and put alkaline foods in your body. But there are some necessary acids, okay? And there are some alkaline things that you cannot put in your body. I mean, bleach is alkaline. Uh, ammonia is alkaline, okay? But that doesn't mean it's digestible for you. So the goal here is to balance your acid alkaline. For example, uh, a Meyer lemon is uh, acidic, but it's a structural acid, okay? So you still need some of these acids. It's very cleansing. Um, and some people think limes are um, acidic. Actually, they're alkaline. Uh, alka acidic doesn't mean that it's something that is uh, sour. I think people assume that acid means sour and alkaline does it and all this. Um, but it's all coming down to what the pH balance is of that uh, fruit or plant. All right, so, so above 7, 7.5 alkaline, below acidic. And anything acidic, of course, is uh, detrimental to the body, detrimental to the organs. And coming from um, a background in colon therapy is how I really got into culinary arts, was colon therapy. And when I turned 18, I actually decided I'm going to clean my body up because I've been eating chitlins and pork chops and ramen noodles and bologna sandwiches and Doritos all my life, okay? And I'm, I'm, the, I'm one of three siblings, and everybody's sick, you know, <laughs> but me at this point. And uh, I'm holding on. So, you know, after watching uh, my grandfather pass of diabetes, watching uh, my mother suffering from thyroid issues, my sister, who cannot have children, has never had children because of uh, ovarian cysts and full hysterectomy at just 23, which is insane, all right? Um, this is something that I did not want to have to experience. I wanted to prevent, okay? So, you know, I'm coming in uh, thinking, my God, there's something wrong here. I don't think that God meant for us to not be well. How can I fully live my purpose if I'm not well, you know? How can I actively be there for my husband, my family, my peers, my work that I'm here to do, you know, if I'm not well? So we have to, especially black women, we have to start prioritizing ourselves a lot more because we take care of everybody, right? And we don't really take care of ourselves. So that's very important. So we want to try to incorporate these alkaline living foods into our body to help that inner ecosystem to be flourishing and, and balanced and keep our organs intact, keep your blood clean. It's very important. We don't want to become so inflamed that we're not able to function. And then your organs start to turn against you, all right? So we want to get off garlic in general, but it is something that can be helpful. It is an antibiotic. Um, if you have the flu, you know, this can be used as a medicine, all right? But it's not supposed to be used as a daily three to five time a day food consumption item. Does that make sense? This is not something that you eat all the time. You know, this is a medicine, all right? Um, for when you want to blast that mucus out of your system in the flu season or something like that. But it's not something you want to just eat all the time. It actually really tears away at what's called the mucosal lining in your intestinal tract, okay? As does all acidic foods and processed foods, all these denurtured foods tear away and eat away at that mucosa lining, uh, especially meat. And I, I don't care if it's fish to my pescatarians. I, I, you got to transition over time, and I understand that. I respect it. Um, it takes time. But all flesh foods go into the body, 98 degree weather, and they rot, period. They ferment they rot and once that fermentation takes place in your gut all right it turns into a poison because it's not digesting your body's not just pulling it in making it nutritious and dumping it out it's sitting in your body it's making your bowel very sluggish it's very slow to move out of your system okay 
And I'm telling you, from a colon therapist perspective, lions, tigers, and bears in that thing, like it's not cool, okay, it's bad. And I've seen brothers come in there with six packs and they have the worst digestive system, okay, because they're athletes and they're eating steak and potatoes every day, all right, and they work out, they work out, but their digestive system and their organs are rotting inside, okay, so don't get it twisted. I hear a lot of people say, well, I work out, you know, but your, your fitness is, starts in the inside. Fitness starts in the organs. Fitness starts in the organs, all right? Wellness starts in the organs. So you can see a lot of tiny people, that doesn't mean that that's a sign of wellness, okay? So keep that in mind. Um, corn. We want to get this corn uh, out of our body. I don't know if you guys are familiar with the cornification of America. Look it up. The cornification of America will change your perspective about what is going on with the corn industry. Everything is corn. Everything is corn syrup. Everything is, you know, they'll try to trick you and say it's a amaranth cereal and you look at it and the first ingredient is wheat and corn and then there's a little bit of quinoa and a little bit of amaranth and you know, they try to trick you. You know, you think, oh, you know, a little bit of corn. You know, the corn is very detrimental, does not digest, is highly hybridized. Corn started off as maize, all right? That would be the, uh, the ancestor of what is today's uh, poisonous offspring, all right? Uh, this big, cheap, sweet, oversized corn that we're eating today. So be very mindful about that, vegetarians. Um, so this is just a, a great list of some things that you can start supplementing. If you love your garlic, do some scall scallions, do some shallots, do some uh, um, chive. As a matter of fact, um, esotephata is a spice. They also call it hing, H-I-N-G. Esotephata. I hope y'all got some notepads out because I know there's a lot of information. But hing or esotephata is a wonderful spice. It's real kind of got that funk on it like garlic to try to replace the garlic. So you can do a blend of uh, esotephata with your shallot or your chive, your red onion, uh, your Meyer lemon and, and try to, you know, your sea salt and get that, try to get that same flavor, okay? Won't be exactly the same, but uh, all right. So if we can um, back up a little bit and go to <laughs> a different slide um, while we're getting that together. So, okay, and going back. All right, so I just wanna show you guys some of the best foods that you can get into your body. Um, but while we're doing that, and you can go all the way back to the third slide. Um, I wanna talk a little bit about water because I get a lot of questions about water and what you should drink and how much you should drink. And I know that the standard uh, Western medical system will tell you, get eight glasses of water a day. Um, you know, some people say, well, I'm trying to drink at least a gallon a day. Um, and water is important and hydration is important, but we are um, gravely miseducated on what is hydration and what is really water. And there's a lot of water on the market that I call dead water, okay, or bulk water, because it doesn't penetrate the cell. So you are not really drinking, okay? And I, I, I wanna make that clear in that uh, what's happening is uh, our current water system is subjective um, to the point to where we just really have to make do with what's best and then from there, treat our water to get the most out of the water. And that's what's going on. Don't run out and get a $10,000, $20,000 alkaline machine. What's happening with mach these machines is the water is running through metal plates that are giving off the electric charge that is saying, boom, alkaline. And then it comes out and you do the test and it's alkaline. Okay, so again, Going back to nature, you know, God didn't make an alkaline machine, give it to Adam and Eve and say, bam, you know, here's your alkaline water. It didn't work like that, uh, nor do I, my, my mother nature doesn't work like that, and that I need to go spend $20,000 for me to drink, 
You know, that's not how we're gonna do that. So how do we do that? Uh, we use nature. And like the brother Kepra said, your first hydration should come from your fruits and vegetables. That's first, because that is an alkaline water coming out of that peach or that papaya or that watermelon or that pear, okay? That is your first source of hydration. And I'm telling you that you can get more hydration from a cucumber than you're gonna get from two cups of dead water. Tap water, bottled water. And if you're lucky that bottled water has a BPA free container so that you're not also getting leached chemicals and dyes and all these things. This water is sitting in warehouses for days in the heat before you even get it, okay? Uh, there's been numerous tests on water. There's some incredible videos out about uh, water and how they're taking all the city's water and condensing it. And you can see so much crap from dog hair to feces and urine. I mean, it's insane. All right, so water is bad. That's the truth. Get you some distilled water. Get you some out, uh, um, spring water and get it home and treat it. If you have to get a glass dispenser, 10, 20 bucks, find that online, find it in a health food store, keep that dispenser in your home, get those BPA free or glass containers, three gallon, five gallon, whatever, go to your health food store, fill that up with some distilled or some spring, you know, or whatever they have, whatever they have that is the cleanest, most purified form of reverse osmosis water that you can get. Take that home. Get you some liquid chlorophyll. Liquid chlorophyll organic. And you're gonna put a few, uh, maybe a tablespoon or so into like a five gallon container. You wanna do maybe a tablespoon or two of the chlorophyll. And that's going to go into your water, and that's going to alkalize your water. It's also going to um, uh, structure your water. It's going to restructure uh, the ions in your water. And it's going to shrink that uh, molecule so that it can now go and penetrate the cell. So you can really get hydrated. And you'll feel the difference. You'll know, okay, now I'm drinking water. Okay, it'll hydrate your cells. That's very, very important because the cells are dehydrated in most people, especially because of the high carb diet and the high iodized salt diet that we're eating. Now, there's nothing wrong with salt, but there is something wrong with uh, table salt. So we want to incorporate salt. As a matter of fact, I'm very anti, if any of you are following my blogs or anything, I talk about salt. I've been talking about it for years and that they, the doctors have scared black folks, especially because of high blood pressure, into not eating salt. But salt's one of the most nutrient-dense things you can put in your body. You, it's electrical, and you need salt, all right? But you want the right salt that's full of minerals, and that's gonna be your Celtic, some people say Celtic, salt. It's kind of moist, it's been sun-dried. <clears throat> also, your pink salt. Pink Himalayan sea salt, preferably. There's some red and black salts out there that are wonderful, full of minerals. All right, so you don't have to eat tasteless food. Okay, you can have salt, but uh, you want the right salt. All right, it's very electrical. You can light a light bulb with salt water. All right, so and it, as you can see here, we're still talking about. Eating fruit with seeds, very, very important. Papaya being just one of the best things you can get in your body. Um, back up, up, oh, back up again. Oh, that, that's the baby banana that we were talking about earlier. That's actually one of the red burrow bananas. Amaranth, if we could squish this slide up, that'd be great, but I'll do my best. So this is amaranth. It's a really great breakfast cereal for those of you that are like, well, damn, you know, breakfast is probably the most unhealthy thing that we eat. Um, it's going to be either carbs or protein or dairy. And all three of those things, especially for the African American, is deadly. All right, the carbs, the protein, and the dairy, that's, that is, especially in excess, is really uh, to our detriment. It's, it's, it's horrible. All right, and that's really why we're passing on diabetes. I tell people, diabetes is not genetic. You do not have a genetic predisposition to diabetes. 
what you have is uh, you know, grits and potatoes and bacon and eggs on your plate. That's what you got, you know. <laughs> you and your grandma and your mom and all of you have been eating the same thing. So you're passing on the lifestyle. You're not passing it on through your genes. Don't let anybody tell you that. You can change your genes. The body changes all the time, okay? Yeah, you can change your genes. So you can heal yourself and continue to create new cells in the body all the time. So don't assume that you can't get better because of what your mother or your grandmother was doing. You can, okay? So that was, that's one of the best things that you can put in your body. Full of protein, don't worry about making the shift over to a plant-based diet. Protein is not an issue uh, for vegetarians. I've been eating this way for 17 years and I've never felt faint or weak because of lack of protein. Um, I eat hemp seeds, I eat chickpeas, lentils, amaranth, uh, get more than enough protein, almonds, um, more than enough. You actually don't even need that much protein. Matter of fact, the, you know, we'll talk about this later, but protein in itself really is a, 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 a myth predicated by the uh, meatpacking industry. But um, what you do need is um, nutrients, minerals, electricity, um, and you can get plenty of protein minus the meat. The meat, as a matter of fact, once you cook it, you lose 83% of the uh, available protein anyway. So you're really, I mean, you could do like the Japanese and just eat sushi and, and be better off. I mean, you're not, you're not getting a lot of protein because you're eating a fried chicken or cooked steak. That's a myth, okay? You're killing, you're killing the nutrient. All right, so I love this. I wanna leave it here for just a second. Um, very important, sea moss, carob, and dates. These are three superfoods on the electric foods list. If you guys have seen Dr. Sabi's list, if you guys have seen uh, the AMA or Aboriginal Medical Association list <clears throat> for electric foods, alkaline foods, um, this is one of those um, wonderful creations that I make every day. Um, that really gives you a nice full feel and you still get that kind of chocolate taste as I love chocolate. Um, but you can do the baby bananas and blend that with your sea moss, your carob, and date. And um, I tell men especially to get plenty of sea moss. It's high, high, high in minerals. It has 92 of the and, uh, 98 of the 102 minerals that the body needs, matter of fact. And some of you may be not uh, so familiar with sea moss, and I'll show you a picture of raw sea moss in just a moment. But <clears throat> sea moss for your joints is phenomenal. If you're suffering with joint pains and things like that, uh, brittle and weak hair, nails, bones, things like that. Um, if you are looking to enhance your reproductive situation, men for prostate, women, uh, you know, you, if you're losing too much sperm. I know we have children in the room, but you know, we're gonna talk about this, this wellness. Okay, they're out of the room. So for the most part, you want to make, maintain your uh, vitality, brothers, okay? If you're losing too much of your male fluid, okay? So we wanna replace that, sisters, and help them out by giving them sea moss. And you can get sea moss usually in Oriental or Caribbean markets. All right, or you can order it online. And it's gonna come to you in its raw form, very, very salty. So you're gonna wanna rinse it well. You're gonna wanna either soak or boil it. And then you're gonna wanna blend it and it creates a nice gel. And that gel you can put in glass in your fridge and just pull from that every day. Throw that in your juices, throw that in your smoothies. Throw that in your, I mean, I make pie with it. I mean, it's wonderful. It has a nice gel texture. So it's, it's very similar to male fluid, matter of fact. And it actually, I mean, there's, we're, we're one in the same with Mother Earth. I mean, she knows what she's doing. And <laughs> uh, that sea, man, uh, which is very vital, creates a whole nother life being. We need to enhance that process through using something like our beautiful sea moss. So you'll, this is um, sea moss after it's been rinsed and now it's in its soaking process. 
Um, it can be soaked or boiled. Um, I, I usually boil mine really quickly. I mean, it doesn't take time. I mean, three minutes, this stuff is melting and you can let it cool, blend it, and store it. And just take a tablespoon or two of that every day and put it in your smoothie, all right? As you can see here, plenty of trace minerals, potassium, calcium, fights infection, digestion, it's excellent. Excellent, and it's excellent for children and babies. If your children are having issues with digestive, eczema, any of those uh, brittle bones, for babies, if they're too small, if, they've been, if they're born, uh, I, I had a sister whose baby was uh, preemie, and that baby sprung up so well. Her and her mother sent me a letter to say thank you for this recipe because this baby is thriving. This baby uh, had a diet of sea moss with uh, almond milk blended with some coconut water, hemp seed, and avocado. And we, we added the avocado a little later when he got a little bigger. But just in the beginning, it was a little bit of her milk because she wasn't able to feed. So as much as she could get, we had her milk blended with hemp or almond milk or coconut water with flesh or without, blended in sea moss. And the baby would just drink that. And then we later included dates as well and pink salt. Okay? So that baby formula right there is... I mean, this baby is thriving, okay? Nice and plump and thriving. Uh, dandelion, I don't know if we can scoot that slide up, brothers, whoever's controlling the computer over here, but if we can scoot that up and see a little bit more about what's going on with Dandelion, don't change chest. And she tells that story, and it burst on her chest in the middle of the night, and she went and was um, examined, and the cancer has completely left her body no medication, no radiation, okay? Her cells simply uh, wanted to live through her diet. You know, she, she was able to replenish and nourish her cells. You know, very simple, very simple. So the body is always wants to heal itself. That's the big thing that I think we, we forget. We act like the body is something that's working against us, but the body is always trying to heal itself. It's the most sophisticated machine. You know, the creator has made us wonderfully so that as long as we're providing the right environment it will work just fine for you and it will heal itself so usually you know when there's a problem that's just a signal that you need to provide a better environment for your body to thrive all right we have any other questions lupus um with lupus you know i don't know for those of you just coming in um lupus Cancer, multiple sclerosis, even AIDS and herpes have all been cured. Been cured for years, okay? And I don't know if you guys know uh, about the brother, um, Dr. Sabi went up against the Supreme Court in 1989. Look it up. That brother never been to school. That brother could barely read a book. And he's um, right out of Honduras. Born and raised, English being his second language, all right. In 1989, he was arrested for promoting that he was curing these diseases, including AIDS. And he went to the Supreme Court and came to the courthouse with 77 patients along with their diagnostic sheets proving that he had cured them simply with living non-hybrid foods, not vegan vegetarian, meaning vegetarian pizza and hot dogs, non-hybrid electrical food. And then he had uh, his herbs as well as a part of that process and cured all of those diseases, okay? So, you know, when, when the sister's asking about lupus, uh, my first thoughts are, you know, that everything has to start with the detoxing of what you've already put into your body you know, anything that's detrimental to your body, you have to cleanse that out first. And then you know, you're gonna do that with your, your Maya lemons, your limes, your ginger, your cayenne. Um, and then you wanna rebuild. Uh, and fruit is cleansing. You know, really people say, I'm gonna go on detox, I'm gonna go on a cleanse. Your, your food is the cleanse. What you eat is the cleanse. You should always be cleansing. I say the ABCs of cleanse, always be cleansing. Everything you put in your body is the cleanse. 
So it's not like, oh, I'm a good cleanse and all, you know, you're cleansing, okay? So you're eating a cleansing diet, all right? So in, incorporating uh, the ginger, the cayenne, uh, the bitters, the herbs um, into your diet, that's gonna cleanse. And then you rebuild with sea vegetables, especially for lupus. Sea vegetables, um, and you wanna get a whole lot of um, uh, copper, iron, magnesium, things like that that are gonna come through your leafy greens, um, your burrow bananas. Also, um, there's a fruit that's coming to mind here. Um, it's gonna come to me any moment. But you wanna, uh, you wanna incorporate some of these exotic fruits that we've, we stayed away from. Um, tamarind is a, a wonderful, wonderful uh, fruit. It's kinda like a date. Uh, looks kind of like a pea pod, but if you see uh, tamarind paste, tamarind frozen or fresh, wonderful to incorporate into your diet. Tamarind also, um, uh, it's coming to me, sour orange, sour orange, what they call ugly fruit. And I know some of my islanders know what I'm talking about. Uh, one of the best things you can put into your body. Uh, the typical navel orange is not it. It's a hybrid, okay? The real orange is that ugly fruit, sour orange, and you blend that with some ginger and a little bit of cayenne, some tamarind. You can add your maple syrup if you choose. Divine, divine, and very cleansing, very healing, all right? So indigenous people knew what they were doing, you know, they, they had access to all these wonderful things that unfortunately we've been taking away from our environment and away from our food supply, okay, of what the things that make us thrive, which are these indigenous tropical electric foods. So we have to get a little bit out of our comfort zone. More questions, yes. Absolutely. Gotcha. Um, he's asking about herbs, you know, what herbs do I grow or what I suggest you grow? Um, and again, you know, for, for my Sebi babies in the room, y'all know half of the herbs that he uses are things that just don't grow here. And you'd be lucky if you can find them, you gotta go across the border. Um, but while you're here, um, and our, our Native American ancestors taught us well, my family's Choctaw, and they are serious about uh, getting some of these foods what, that are still considered indigenous foods into the diet. And so there's gonna be things like um, the native herbs, burdock. Burdock grows wild where I'm from in Oklahoma. Burdock is one of the best things you can get in your body, full of iron. Sisters especially need this if you're dealing with that low iron, burdock. Also grow, um, grow you some nettle. Nettle, stinging nettle, nettle. Uh, wonderful, wonderful. Um, you can make your infusions with that. Uh, raspberry leaf and also the dandelion leaf. The dandelion leaf, that's one of the ones I would suggest uh, that you incorporate into your diet or grow. Uh, and I personally love eucalyptus. Um, any other questions? Yes. What's the reverse process in uh, alcohol? So if we eat all what we're eating and then we go and get drunk, does that counteract? Yeah, you know, I call I call alcohol uh, liquid uh, carbohydrates, sugar, bread. You know, it's just it's bread. If you try to make wine, which I certainly tried, you know the recipe calls for what? Yeast calls for, or a loaf of bread, what they call prison liquor. <laughs> and if it ain't that, then they need what else? Potato, or what else they need? The rice wine, rice, white rice, that's what the Asians do with the sake. It's all bad, it's all carbs, it's horrible. So if you wanna reverse a situation where you have uh, excessive amounts of alcohol messing with your liver, dandelion. Get you some dandelion tincture from the health food store. Put that in under your tongue or with your water or get you the fresh dandelion. That's gonna really kick it. That's gonna clean that liver right up. Okay, any other question? I'm sister, go ahead. 
Oh, we got the mic going. I'm sorry, guys. Yeah. So, um, mothers, new mothers that can't produce, they have a problem lactating, for example, and they know better than to do the formula thing. That's my first question. I always got two questions. My second question is um, like toddlers, or when the children come out of infancy, and um, like strong foods you might recommend in regards to surpassing the infancy stage? It's a great question. Um, <clears throat> okay, so a few things. First question, you're asking about women lactating. Um, this is really important. I actually talked to um, my midwife the other night. Um, I don't know if you guys, have, if you're familiar with Dr. Jewel Pukra. Dr. Jewel Pukra is fantastic and uh, check her out. I know she gives a lot of advice on birthing and things like that. Um, with lactating, oftentimes, brother, um, it is a dietary situation, but this is also a situation where the baby may or may not, um, the baby and the mother's connection needs to be assessed really, really deeply, and her connection to her body needs to be assessed really, really deeply. And this is just on a mental, spiritual level. You know, Pukram always talks about whatever we're experiencing has to do with our state of consciousness. So the first thing, if I'm to be very accurate with you, then I'd have to, I, I can't not mention that the lactating process oftentimes for women is first mental spiritual, okay? That's the first thing. Um, also, the baby may or may not be inter as interested as it wants to be in her milk based on how she's nurtured herself through the, the gestation process. So, um, the first thing I would do is, you know, get her some mother's milk tea and get on the milk thistle. And the milk thistle herb should help to bring her milk down. Um, warm water and massage also on her breast is really, really important. And as this is my first child and I'm about to go through that process, you know, this is all from, uh, uh, from my teachers to you, uh, from books I've read to you, and in theory to you, you know, because I myself haven't had this experience. But from what I'm being taught, that this is the process, and these are some of the best things that she can do. And just making sure that she's getting plenty greens and things like that, uh, fresh green juices and things like that are gonna be helpful as well. Um, and then your second question was about toddlers and feeding children. I do not suggest that the mother jump too soon to any solid food, okay? That's completely unnecessary. Let that baby live on liquid for as long as possible, okay? So, of course, her milk being the first and best source of nutrition, and then secondly, uh, if that can't happen, hemp milk. Hemp milk and sea moss. That combination is excellent. And get some of this flesh out this coconut and that water and blend it in that Vitamix, you know, high speed blender. That formula right there mixed with maybe a little bit of dates, just a little bit of pink sea salt or a little bit of sea moss and things like that. Um, as the baby gets bigger, um, add some avocado. Um, the baby can start eating maybe um, quinoa flake cereal, the hot cereal, amaranth cereal, you know. Uh, and then later on, it can get a little more sophisticated, some butternut squash and things like that. Um, but don't rush that process. Don't rush into food for, that, for, the t for the baby. And then into the toddler phase, really at two and three and four, now we can eat our hot cereal and our steamed greens and you know steamed vegetables and things like that and plenty plenty fruit plenty fruit smoothies sm fruit everything they love fruit that should be the first thing so but don't don't be so quick to get them into carbohydrates of any form either okay does that make sense okay yes sir we got a question Greetings, sister. Greetings. What about foods that would combat the radioactive energy that we are constantly being faced with with cell phones and, and all this electromagnetic energy that we get? Mm -hmm. Good luck. <laughs> Good luck. Um, the radioactive energy that we're dealing with, 
I wouldn't say that food would be the number one way to protect against that. I would first deal with, uh, it's kind of like fighting fire with fire. So the first thing I would say is uh, your crystals and stones and your argonite and things like that are going to be the first thing that you want to use to combat radioactivity and cell phone tower and all this craziness that we're dealing with is to surround yourself with argonite and um, also obsidian, magonite, things like that. Those are going to be, you can actually even put some of those crystals in your water containers um, and put that in your, in your uh, glass dispensers, at the bottom of your dispenser. Um, but keeping those crystals around your home, that's going to be the first and foremost way to, to fight that. Otherwise, then of course, electric foods diet, we do our best and pray. Because <laughs> the situation's messed up. Any other questions? Yes, sister. She's been waiting for a while. Um, I have one quick question and then another one. Um, are chives sprouts of garlic? That was my first question. Like, do they come from garlic? And then my second question was um, dealing with breast, uh, cysts in the breast. Um, it's not cancerous, but you don't want it there. And you don't know if that's going to be a problem for breastfeeding. So how do you deal with that in terms of that? Very important. That's a very important question. I talked about this recently. If you guys are not on uh, Chef Aki Instagram, I'm probably there more than anywhere else giving information and exchanging information. And we just put up a post about the lymphatic system. Very important, sisters. We talk about blood, but we don't talk about lymph. Your lymphatic fluid, okay? This is very important for women. If you're doing breast exams and you feel lumps, if you feel lumps under your armpit, okay? This is very important. Your lymph nodes are toxic, clogged, and or simply stagnant and not moving, your lymph fluid. So I had that experience where between the ages of about 16 and 28, I would always feel lumps in my breasts and I didn't understand that. And of course I'm paranoid because you're thinking, oh darn, I've got some benign cancer tumor going on. You don't know. So you, but you know you feel something. And you're like, I can't have cancer, so what is the problem? What's going on, sisters, is we have to, one, get off of these underwire bras. And I know my sisters with the tick old bitties don't want to come off the underwire. I get it. I feel you. And, and, and even you, as you're progressing in your diet and getting that estrogen out of your diet, your breasts are going to go back into more of a state of balance with the rest of your body and skeletal system as well. Okay, because that estrogen is telling you we're preparing for a fetus. Okay, that's what's going on. So we want to get the underwire bras, get you some natural cloth bras that give you some good support. If you got to spend a hundred dollars, that'll be that one bra that you wash and wear that bra because you don't want that wire picking up all that mess and, and, and leaching into your skin. Okay, putting those metals and aluminum in your skin. Same thing with aluminum pots and pans. Second thing, deodorant. Get off conventional deodorant today. Today. Now, I know you're saying I tried the natural one and it don't work. It's true, I tried 15 of them and they didn't work. Uh, it wasn't until I tried the crystal deodorant which is the salt crystal that actually worked for me, okay? Now, I've heard maybe one or two people say it didn't work. Most people say it works, okay? So it's very strange, because it's a salt crystal, and you gotta wet it and roll it around, but I'm talking about hot yoga sweat lodges. It works for me. So get off the conventional deodorant today because the perfumes, the parabens, the chemicals, the aluminum, all that stuff is going into your armpit, and this is a very moist area where your pores are open and drinking that stuff every day, and then it's going right into your breast and causing these blockages in there, okay? And your body needs to be expelling that. This is a, a, an area for expelling and cleansing and detoxing, okay? So you're not supposed to not sweat, but you're supposed to just be a little damp, not funky, but damp, 
and all that will start to change as your body chemistry is coming into balance when you get into more of a plant-based diet. So this is all a process, okay? So you want to also get yourself a dry skin brush. And when you get to your shower, brush yourself from the foot up in circular motion, clockwise toward your heart, and get that lymph fluid moving in your body. And of course, exercise helps with this to get the lymph moving. Um, hot and cold showers and things like that, hot and cold baths, take your salt baths and things like that. But you're gonna see, I'm telling you, I didn't even realize that one day I just had no lumps anymore. And I'm telling you that for a fact. There were no more lumps. And I know it's because I switched finally. I mean, I was vegan for years. I just finally said, okay, I'm gonna switch. I just didn't take it seriously. And one day the lumps were gone, okay? Um, and you asked about garlic and chives. Um, so garlic and chives are, is garlic from the chive family or vice versa? Is it sprouted from a garlic? Um, that's a good damn question. I don't know. I'll find out. Any other questions? Yes. If you're um, if you're drinking water on the go, you're not able to get to uh, some good water. Yeah. What do you do? What do you do? All right. So I'll tell you what I do is uh, myself and my husband. We've got our water distiller at home that we've treated that water and we recycle our glass containers. Go to TJ Maxx, if you got one from Whole Foods, wash it out and keep it, get you some bottle clean cleaners, two, three, four dollars, get you some glass containers, fill that sucker up at home and go. Keep two of them in the car. That's what I do, because I don't wanna have to get stuck with crap water. So I take my water with me, I take everything with me. Go, go ahead. Yes? I would like to know what can I do for, to I have arthritis in my legs, and I'd like to know what can I do to convert, convert it or have the Understood. Gotcha. Um, one of the first things you want to do is get rid of any aluminum cooking um, pots and pans. So we're done with that. Perfect. Um, my grandmother struggles with arthritis, and all her life she's been cooking with a blend of cast iron skillet and then some really cheap pans, aluminum pots and pans. And she's struggling with that aluminum coming from, of course, again, a combination of uh, underwire bras, deodorants, things that we're drinking, uh, bad water, um, and then also the pots and pans. So once that's out of the way and you're rebuilding, uh, the sea moss that we talked about is wonderful. Um, red onion is wonderful. Um, and, I'm, and, and, and it's coming to me. The burdock that we talked about, wonderful to incorporate into your diet for arthritis as well. And I'm thinking of a few other things as, as we're talking that are coming to me right now for arthritis, but I have some information for you specifically on arthritis that if you come see me, I'd love to email it to you. Um, I have a, a whole blog on arthritis I'd love to give to you. Yeah, thank you. There's a, she's got the mic. Hi, um, what kind of foods do you recommend for fibroids? to get rid of fibroids. Fibroids. Glad you asked. We're doing a huge fibroid elimination campaign right now, you all. If you go to fibroidelimination.com, you can learn a lot about um, and read some of the excerpts from the Fibroid Elimination Bible. You can also download the Fibroid Elimination Recipe Guide. 19 bucks, download it to your phone. GoChefAki.com, A-H-K-I fibroidelimination.com. Um, some of the best things, uh, with the fibroids, a lot of it is what you take out of your diet. There are even some estrogen-filled, or what we call aromatase-filled foods that are even vegetables and fruits that you wanna take out the diet. The first thing is fermented, anything fermented. And I know they try to say, oh, eat fermented and kombucha and apple cider vinegar and all this and that. For women with fibroids, I do not suggest it to get the ferments out of the body. Um, certainly want to get rid of anything that is going to increase fat. Um, what I find with uh, fibroids, uh, women with fibroids is 90% of them are struggling with weight also. And so oftentimes it is the estrogen and the, the what we call fat or white adipose tissue feeding off of each other 
So the more that you are sweating, the more that you are um, eating very, very clean, no carbs. No carbs with the uh, exception of maybe butternut squash and then quinoa, your millet, your amaranth, your spelt. No carbohydrates because that's going to feed the fibroid. Um, no ferments. And um, you want to get um, the black cherries that we talked about and the red raspberry. Very important. Blueberries, blackberries, any of that stuff. Very important. Um, Get off, get off peanuts, peanut butter. Get off that also. So it's gonna be a, a little bit more about probably what you don't eat. Dairy is a, certainly a no-no. It's gonna feed the fibroid. And I did a whole, um, on my Instagram page, what are you feeding your fibroids? And everything on a typical soul food plate feeds a fibroid. You wanna be really careful about that. So, uh, you know, your candy yams and your cornbread and all that corn products you want to completely come off the corn products also, okay? So this is some good stuff for any reproductive disorder. Yes, sir? I wanted to know your take on um, drinking too much distilled water because from what I understand is that um, you should really be drinking distilled water when you're cleansing and you, because it'll strip the body of minerals, it'll strip you know, too much minerals out of the body. So I just wanted to get your take on that. What you be drinking if we're not cleansing? Which water should it be reverse osmosis? Should it be spring water? Gotcha. I, if, if you all heard the brother, we were talking about water early. I don't know if you were here, but uh, distilled water drinking uh, in large amounts uh, is known to leach minerals from the body. Um, it's, it's not replenishing minerals because it's been distilled. Um, we talked about treating our water a little early. I don't know if you were here, but adding. So adding chlorophyll and pink Himalayan sea salt to the water is going to be best. And then also uh, the spring water, of course, is best, but I would still treat my spring water also. And then, of course, um, your first choice of water shouldn't come from anything less than your coconut or your fruit in the first place. So um, your fruits first, then your chlorophyll spring, your chlorophyll distilled water in that order. And reverse osmosis, I don't really suggest, you know, again, we just don't have a lot of access. I know a lot of people just don't have access. Um, some people can go, you can go to lipsywater.com and order fresh spring water in glass to your home and things like that, lipsywater.com. But for those of you who can't, um, you know, if you have to have a reverse osmosis, treat it and, and good luck. <laughs> it's bad. Oh, liquid chlorophyll, you can find it almost any health food store. Look for it organic. There's a brand called, I think, DeSosa, D-E-S-O-U-Z-A, something like that. Um, good brand, pretty much tasteless, seven, eight bucks, any health food store, Whole Foods. I don't know the local health food store here. So I'm going to get ready to shut it down, guys. I'm going to take one more question. The sister's asking about an alternative birth control, y'all. All right? <laughs> this is rough. Um, I get asked this question a lot. And women who are struggling with wanting to be intimate and not create life, I, got, I, I can't lie, this is a rough one for me only because it, it's, it's, um, it kind of defeats the purpose, you know? I mean, you're supposed to have sex and multiply. So, you have to know your cycle, sisters. You need to learn your cycle. Some women are using an iPhone app to track their cycle. You need to get in tune with your body. You know, this is the way it's been done in the past. Uh, most of us grown women in our 30s don't know our cycle. We don't pay attention to it, it just comes and there it is. And that's an issue that we've left to convenience to doctors to monitor for us. And that is the major issue here, is that there is a time in which your body can give birth or not, okay? So if you don't wanna get pregnant, either A, don't do it, B, learn your cycles, 
you know, and then C, communicate with your man and work that situation out because if he's not ready to be a father, then he needs to understand that cycle and don't be messing with you and messing up your cycle situation and messing with your, you know, you don't want to um, encourage her, brothers, if she's trying to try the natural method. You, you, you need to support her in her process if she is um, trying to get off the estrogen pills you know, and see, the, the men are usually the ones that make this really rough for us because they've gotten used to the convenience of you being on the pill. Am I right? So they can just enjoy the situation and you, you know, so we've left that to someone else. So that's a problem. So sisters, you, you've got to get back in tune with your cycle so that you know how to manage your intimate life if you're not ready to birth. That's the, that's the bottom line. Other than that, then of course abstaining. Um, there is no miracle herb that I know of that's gonna keep you from having a baby. I haven't found it yet. If you have, then please tell me, because I'm interested to pass that to the next person, okay? All right, so that's gonna be it, you guys. Thank you for having me. Um, it's, Richmond has been <laughs> an amazing experience. It's like a big old family reunion. That's what I told um, Brother Duran, who had me down here. Brother Duran, y'all, please give it up for Brother Duran, Chavis, first of all, because that brother has been holding down and doing a lot of work and putting in work here in Richmond, and I'm so proud of him. And I'm proud of all y'all for showing up for yourselves, okay? Because there's a lot of brothers and sisters who are not ready to even get into the state of consciousness of healing and wellness and getting back into nature. And if we get too far from nature, then we're gonna really, really get into murky water. And we don't wanna do that, so we have to support him and what he's doing and all of his affiliates and, and the things that they're doing. And his wonderful staff have been great to me and embraced me, and they've handled this very professionally and they've been great. So I've enjoyed Richmond, I hope to come back. If y'all have questions, come and see me after. I have books over here for you. And we are going to sign those books and get them to you. And if we run out, then you can go to GoChefAki.com, download it, download it to your phone. Also, if you need a meal calendar for your family, meal plans with recipes to go with that meal plan to help you transition, then we have that for you at GoChefAki.com slash services. You can get a, a meal plan, 7, 14, and 21 day meal plan, all right? So if you're interested in that, come sign the email list, come see me. If you took a picture, tag me, and that's that. <laughs> Thank you all. All right, peace and power. Next I'd like to, uh, oh yeah, before, give it up one more time for Chef Aki. Hold up, no, hold up, no, wait, 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 wait. I see people moving. I got some. I got something really powerful for you. Please, do not move. Do not leave. Do not get out your seat yet. Okay. Okay. I see. I see people itching. Don't do it. I say. I say. I say. I say. And Zebu Muntu is about to come. Y'all gonna have to get up because y'all gonna have to make room because we are going to throw down.